Welcome to an episode of Lab Muffin Chats. I haven't really thought of a better name yet. Today, I'm going to get really nosy on what goes on behind the scenes at SkinCeuticals. I'm chatting with one of L'Oreal's senior chemists, Rabi Sahiti. She works in their active cosmetics division and she formulates primarily for SkinCeuticals. So I wanted to ask you, how did you end up working for SkinCeuticals? That's a great question. So I have my bachelor's in chemistry from Wagner College. And from there, I went on to receive my master's in material science and engineering from Stevens Institute of Technology. And not long after that, I was hired as a lab tech by SkinCeuticals, and I'm now working as a senior chemist for the brand. I always felt that it was the ideal place for me to be because it combined my academic interests in the sciences with my personal passion for skincare. I've had challenges with my own skin, and I know the toll that that can take on your self-confidence. So it's very satisfying work for me to be able to contribute to the development of products that people can use and hopefully benefit from. I was initially drawn to SkinCeuticals because of their strong trust in science, and even L'Oreal as a group because of their stringent policies surrounding safety and sustainability. Yeah, that's really cool. I think SkinCeuticals is like quite unique um, in skincare because there's just so much science that goes on behind the brand. Um, so I was wondering, what do you actually do at SkinCeuticals? Like, what do you do day to day? What's a typical day like for you? Yeah, as a formulation chemist at SkinCeuticals, I spend most of my time on the lab bench. We run many formulation trials as we try to incorporate actives and address stability and solubility challenges. I also work very closely with various support groups, and those include microbiology to ensure that we have a robust preservative system for all of our formulas, compatibility to ensure that we've chosen the right packaging to deliver our formula to our consumer. We also work very closely with our process engineers to make sure that we have the most efficient manufacturing process in place. And we work very closely with safety to make sure that there are no adverse reactions caused by our formulations. So what exactly goes into making a SkinCeuticals product? I guess, like, can you give us like an idea of um, all, well, most of the big steps in the pathway from, I guess, like where does SkinCeuticals get their ideas from? Yeah, that's also a great question. So every product starts off with an idea. And that idea can come from the product development teams or it can come from the R&I labs. And as a brand, we often find inspiration in the future of health as we try to anticipate the needs of our patients. We are also considering the needs of our physicians and we, as we try to enhance cosmetic procedures and we look to new ingredients. So SkinCeuticals is always seeking out not just highly efficacious ingredients, but ones with interesting mechanisms of action. The formulation process is quite extensive. Um, once we begin working on a formulation, we go through many iterations before we achieve a final formula. And that process includes studying the physical stability of the formulation, studying the chemical stability of our actives, determining the compliancy in countries of interest, working with compatibility to make sure the formula is okay in our packaging, obtaining microbiology clearance and obtaining safety clearance amongst other things. Once we have a finalized formula, then we go through extensive clinical testing to make sure that our formula is effectively targeting the areas of interest. So with the clinical testing, um, how do you decide who to test on for a particular product? Because, um, I mean, you have so many products, you have like pigment products, you have antioxidant products. Um, yeah, how do you decide who to test on? Do you test on like a range of skin types or like, is there usually some sort of target um, skin type, for example? Like you said, it's very dependent on the product that we're trying to test. So if we have a product that's targeted towards sensitive skin, we will try to recruit uh, subjects with sensitive skin to perform our clinical testing on. More and more so, we are trying to make sure that our panels are inclusive and we test a variety of uh, Fitzpatrick's to make sure that we cover a broad spectrum of skin tones and make sure that our products are effective against all of them. So long story short, it really depends on what the product is and make sure that we recruit people with those specific needs. If it's acne prone, if it's sensitive skin, um, we want to make sure that our subjects are representative of the consumers that are targeted with that product. Product. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, all right, I'm not sure if you can even work out this question, but um, I was just kind of wondering, like, how many people are involved 
in making a single product because like I guess like in skincare we sometimes have the idea that you know it's like one or two people doing everything but at at a company like L'Oreal and SkinCeuticals I'm assuming it's going to be a lot. Your assumption is correct in that case there are a very many people that uh, are involved in creating a skincare product and making that come to life taking that conception and making it a reality by a product on the shelf takes a village um, and that begins with you know we have our valorization teams that work on finding the right ingredients and studying different mechanisms of action we have our formulation chemists that work on the formula itself that formula then needs to be tested like i said by a variety of support groups so we have people in microbiology we have people in our analytical labs doing ingredient metering to make sure the chemical stability of the actives is there we have people in compatibility testing the formula with the packaging uh, we have our packaging engineers that we often reach out to to make sure we have the most robust packaging available there's the safety teams, um, the clinical teams, sensory teams. We make sure that we test our formulas so that the experience is as pleasant as it can be. Um, so it's very hard for me to give you a number, but it's quite a lot. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, this is something that I've always kind of wondered. Um, so let's say like you're making, your like SkinCeuticals has decided to release, like, I don't know, some specific serum. Um, in terms of the chemists, like, do you all work on the one product or is it like one, like everyone tries to make the product and then one of you will kind of win <laughs> and then everyone gets rejected? Because that's sort of what happens in like academic research. Like one person usually like their molecule just happens to be the one that turns into a drug. Um, like, is it sort of like that or is it more collaborative? Like one person does one part and then um, like it moves on to the next person or something. So when you are talking about the formulation chemists in general, the way that typically works is we get a, a briefing of all of the products that we're hoping to launch in a given amount of time. And each product will be assigned to a different formulation chemist. So that chemist is going to lead that product and take it through its development process um, from conception to production. So like, I'm assuming you probably have some babies on the market that are like your your little creations. Correct. I mean, with SkinCeuticals, it takes quite a long time to launch a product given all of the testing and proactive research that goes into it. So I would say typically like three to five years for a new launch for SkinCeuticals. Given that I've been with the brand for three years, there's a lot of projects that I'm currently working on that I can't reveal too much about. But one of the products that has already hit the market is called Micropeel Solution for Sensitive Skin. Um, and this is a product that I worked directly on reformulating. It was the original formula was acquired when we bought the brand, but we've made a bunch of renovations to that formulation. It's a professional product. Um, it's a chemical peel that's designed to be safe and mild enough for sensitive skin. And that would be one of my very first babies. That's amazing. Um... All right, let me check my list. Um, so with SkinCeuticals, what are you most excited about that's coming for SkinCeuticals? SkinCeuticals is a brand that's very focused on medical integrated skincare with a professional centric approach. And that being said, one of the most exciting things that's coming for us is all of the collaborations that we are doing with our physicians and our medical experts um, to anticipate the future needs of health and also to design products that are going to enhance cosmetic procedures like microneedling and laser treatments. Just one of the things I'm most excited about is the integration of our skincare with the medical communities and doing what we can to play our part in enhancing cosmetic procedures and making all of our products post-procedure safe. Are there, um, I've heard that there's some um, sustainability um, innovations that SkinCeuticals are involved with? Yes, absolutely. I think the sustainability initiatives at SkinCeuticals is one of the things that I'm most excited about. The uh, philosophy that SkinCeuticals follows for creating their products is the same one that we're applying to our sustainability goals. And that means prevent, correct, and protect. To prevent, that means we are working to prevent waste and improve the sustainability profile of all of our products. And we do that by maximizing our formulas and processes and by minimizing our packaging. To maximize our formulas, we are working to use only what we need and nothing more. 
And every time we make an iteration, we study different sustainability parameters and the impact that our formula is having on those parameters. And those include biodegradability, renewability, green chemistry, and water footprint. We are also looking to use the bio-based alternatives wherever possible. And we already have many bio-based options for solvents like many glycols, as well as some actives like vitamin C and vitamin E. When it comes to maximizing our processes, our process engineers are constantly tweaking the manufacturing process to make sure we have the most efficient one in place. And when we're talking about minimizing package, we're trying to strip away everything that we don't need. So that means the cellophane wrapping around our cartons, any extra paper, all of the unnecessary pieces such as plastic spatulas that sometimes come with our moisturizers. In terms of correct, we are trying to reduce our carbon footprint by optimizing our supply chain. And that means localizing production wherever we can. Historically, SkinCeuticals produced in the US, but more so we are trying to localize that production so that we can minimize energy and emissions that are involved with the transportation of finished goods. And finally, we're working to protect by advancing our medical communities. And that means transforming the clinics of our physicians and aestheticians to more sustainable ones, as well as developing leadership for historically underrepresented groups. So I guess this is always a question that everyone wants to know. Um, what do you personally use in your skincare routine? That is a great question. Um, I love to use gentle cleanser um, because it's so mild and softening and my skin can be sensitive. I also then follow that with CE Ferulic because we all need a good antioxidant to help us combat the environmental aggressors that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think CEF does that best. And finally, I follow that with an SPF because we all need that extra sun protection to help mitigate the accelerated signs of aging caused by UV damage. What would be your advice to someone who wants to um, be a cosmetic chemist working for a brand like SkinCeuticals? My advice would be definitely keep your passion for the skincare. Um, and in terms of skills and education, just make sure that you are, you keep your curiosity, you have an analytical thinking mindset because you want to be able to ask the right questions to solve the right problems um, and be flexible because this industry can be very fast paced and you have to be able to switch gears quickly. Uh, in terms of education, you don't necessarily need a degree in cosmetic chemistry if you want to work in this industry. If you know from the very beginning that's what you want, then that's fantastic. Um, but if you don't, there are definitely opportunities out there. And I think L'Oreal in particular does a great job of recognizing talent and helping it move and grow within the organization. Um, many of my peers have an assorted array of degrees in the sciences from biology and chemistry to chemical and biomedical engineering. So there are definitely opportunities out there.